Hello, um, children of God! Welcome back to Human Church Online English Worship. Today, we will be talking about a man who was saved and changed by Jesus. Are you excited for that? I am so excited to hear that story and be changed through the Word of God. And so before we're gonna go with that, let's all dance and worship Him for His glory. Let's go! Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God. And He holds us in His hand.
before even time began, my life was in his hands. He knows my name. incredible and amazing to give your full attention to God especially um, expressing your worship to him through singing and dancing isn't it that's oh super amazing and so this time let's bow our head close our eyes and let's pray great and awesome God we thank you so much for this very time that you're giving to us even just through online we know that your presence is with us I pray that as we continue to listen to your words today, your children will understand and your children will be transformed by your love through your grace. Thank you so much, God, for everything. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for guiding us today. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. And now, children of God, it's our Bible time. So have your Bible right now and open it with me in the book of Acts chapter 9 verses 1 to 19 yes and let's watch this this is saul saul was a pharisee who hated the followers of jesus so much that he would hunt them down to be brought to trial in jerusalem and he would even seek to murder them Saul was uttering threats with every breath, and he was eager to kill the Lord's followers. So he went to the high priest. He asked him to write a letter to the Jews in Damascus that would allow him to arrest any Christians he found there. He wanted to bring them, both men and women, back to Jerusalem in chains. Now Saul went on his way. And as he came near Damascus, a light from heaven flashed around him, and he heard a voice that said, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Saul cried out, Who are you, Lord? And the voice said, I am Jesus. Rise and go into the city, and you will be told what to do. So Saul got up and he opened his eyes, but he couldn't see anything. So the men who were with Saul led him into the city. After three days, a man named Ananias came to Saul. He put his hands on Saul and immediately Saul could see again. And with that, Saul became a follower of Jesus. He became the very thing he had tried to hunt. 
and he immediately began telling people that Jesus is the Son of God, and he taught them about the mercy of God that he had received. And all who heard him were amazed. He then went by a new name, Paul, as he began preaching not just to the Jewish people, but to everyone. Despite many difficulties like being imprisoned, shipwrecked, and narrowly escaping death multiple times, Paul continued to preach about Jesus. Paul said that he would do everything he could to save people and help them know God. And that's just what he did in order to reach people who would otherwise be unreached. And many came to know Jesus because of what Paul said. Paul taught many in his day through his letters, but even more have come to learn more about Jesus through the letters of Paul that can be read even to this day. Today, children of God, we will be talking about being changed by God by changing the way we think. One man in the Bible who was changed by a new way of thinking was a man called Saul. Saul thought he was a good man because he didn't steal and he went to the synagogue every week, which is where Jews go to worship God. But Saul hated Jesus and he hated the Christians. He hated them so much that he sent loads of them to prison and even had others killed all the time he was doing this he thought he was doing the right things and helping god out but you know god is the one who decides what is right and wrong and although he loved saul he was not pleased with the things that saul was doing he wanted saul to love his son jesus and to love his people the Christians. So one day, when Saul was out on a journey to cause more trouble for Christians, God sent a bright light down from heaven, which was so bright that it blinded him and stopped him in his tracks. And then Saul heard Jesus' voice saying, Saul, why are you hurting me? You see, when we hurt God's people, Jesus takes it personally as if we are actually hurting him. Paul was trembling so much that all he managed to say was, Who are you? A voice came back saying, I am Jesus, who you are hurting. Go to the city and you will be told what to do. So Saul's friends led him to the city and he was so scared. He couldn't eat and drink for three days. Meanwhile, God was talking to a Christian, a man called Ananias. He told Ananias where Saul was staying and told him to go to Saul and put his hands on him so that he would be healed. Well, Ananias was afraid because he knew what Saul was like and how he might cause trouble for him. But God said, Go, I love Saul and have chosen him to take my message to lots of people. So Ananias went and put his hands on Saul, and Saul was healed. Saul realized that the way he had been thinking had been so wrong. He had thought that Christians were God's enemies when all along they were God's friends. When he realized that he had been wrong, Saul said sorry to God for the way he had been and decided to change. Children of God, that's what we need to do. When we learn something in the Bible that's different from the way we've been thinking, we really need to say sorry to God and do things differently. Then we'll be changed on the inside by having a new way of thinking. By the way, children of God, this is the highlight of the thing. Paul's conversion and call 
was a work of divine sovereign grace. Jesus totally took over on the Damascus Road. He was not responding to anything Paul had done to win God's favor. It was completely sovereign. That means it was utterly free and totally. And it came with overwhelming authority and power. Jesus tracked down Saul who became Paul on that road to Damascus, captured and then crushed him. Here, the hunter became the hunted. So children of God, what does this testimony of Saul's dramatic Damascus Road conversion have to do with me and you have to do with our lives? Well, remember this one thing. No one is beyond saving grace. No one. Saul was a murderer. He hated Christians. He hated Jesus. But then God gave him the grace. Paul's miraculous conversion serves as an example to us of the far-reaching arm of God's grace. In one of Paul's final epistles, he told Thimothy as much, Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am the foremost. But I receive mercy for this reason, that in me, as the foremost, Jesus Christ might display his perfect patience as an example to those who were to believe in him for eternal life. That is in 1st Athemory chapter 1 verses 15 to 16. Paul says, if the greatest sinner ever, he was referring to himself, could receive mercy from the Lord, then that serves as an example to anyone who believes in him for eternal life. No one, again, is beyond a saving grace. No one. You may be here right now watching online thinking that you're too far gone. Not according to Paul. Jesus Christ demonstrated his perfect patience, his long suffering with Paul as an example for you. Believe in Jesus for eternal life today. Or maybe this very time you're thinking a friend or a co-worker or a family member and you think they're too far from God, that is a big no. I wonder if there were any widows of men whom Saul had arrested and had killed for their faith in Christ who decided to pray for him, who decided to pray for Paul. I wonder how many of those displaced Christians that Saul was ravaging had prayed for his conversion. And can you imagine how they rejoiced in the Lord when they heard their prayers were answered? My dear children of God, don't give up praying. Don't stop pleading with the Lord to save them. He can do it. And all we need to do is to give our full trust to the Lord because He is working and His divine appointment is coming to them. Let us all pray. Gracious Father in heaven, we come to you, Lord, with a humble heart, knowing that it is only you who holds lives of people. You are sovereign God and everything is under your control. At this very moment, as we meditated, the life of Saul who became Paul was transformed even he was a sinner. We just believe that you can also do the same to our friends, our family, even to people who are watching right now online. God, we want to have a changed lives. We want to serve you. We want to do what you want us to do. So I pray that you will help your children. We surrender our whole life to you, God. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Children of God, this week's memory verse is in Luke chapter 5, verse 32. I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Thank you for joining today. See you next week. God bless you.